Welcome to the next video lab discussion in support of Complete PAC Learn Series, Volume 1 of the Manual, An Introduction to RS5000. This lab project, Get System Variable or Using the GSV Instruction, is a subset of conveyor code, which is found between pages roughly 80 and 112 in the manual. This particular lab is going to be at approximately pages 95 through 96. The GSV instruction. In this lab project, we use the GSV, Get System Variable, instruction to retrieve the date and time from the controller data object. In the manual, I included a chart to show you all the attributes of the class of objects wall clock time. We are only after one attribute, and that was date time. But once you've used the GSV in this instance, it works the same for anything else that you might want to retrieve, and not just from wall clock time, but from any other class of objects in the controller. Now, for industrial controls, wall clock time is most commonly used for day and shift differentiation in your logic where you're tracking production based on time of the day so you can record production values by shift. Now in the older products, and we'll call it the RS5500 family, the system information was easily accessible from the S2 file and you could view it very easily and you could actually use the memory locations directly in your logic. This is not the case with the Logix engine. It, it is available, but you have to create a tag, then use a GSV to retrieve and populate the tag that you created with the data. Now you can also use the SSV, set system variable instruction, to alter the controller data object as well as I.O. modules and bridge modules. We will discuss those some in the advanced manual, but not in this manual. You can see on the screen here where we left off. So we're going to, uh, we'll save this project so we can go up to File, Save, or we could have went over here to the floppy disk symbol. Upload tag values before we save. We're going to continue with this project. We're not done with this project. This is part of the program that we're going to use in multiple programs later on, but we want to build this program up a little fatter before we start creating multiple programs. So we saved. Now we go offline. And we're going to create some tags. And in the lab, I had you create year, month, day, hour, minutes, seconds, and microseconds. And instead of you watching while I do all of them, I'm going to start, then I'm going to pause, finish the creation, and then come back. So we had you go to the controller tags and create a tag called control time. And then we made it a double integer, but we made it an array. So remember, you don't make it a dent and then go back and make it an array. You make it an array right from the beginning. Even if it was going to be just one element array, you would put one in here for dimension. But we're going to put seven. So we're going to create a tag called controller time that has seven double integers in it. And then we're going to create seven more tags as single double integers. Not an array, but a single. The next one we're going to create is year. And we'll leave that as a double integer. And I'm going to pause now, create the rest of them, and then come back. Okay, there's the rest of the single double, in double integers. So we have an array of seven double integers we call control time. Then we have uh, seven single double integer tags, dense, that we call year, month, day, hour, minutes, seconds, microseconds. 
So now let's add a new rung so we can close this down. Go to our main routine. And we can add a new rung just by double clicking at the end there. And then we want to use a GSV. Now we could go along through here until we found the GSV. Which uh, now I'm, I'm hypnotized by this, so I think it, I thought it was input output. I never use this. Yeah, there it is right there, GSV. It's under input output. But instead of doing that, it's always simpler just to double click on the rung, open the ASCII field up here, and just type in GSV. Doesn't even have to be uppercase. Okay, so there's our get system variable. Now the class name is going to be wall clock time. So we'll go down to the bottom here. See, those are already in there. All you have to do is click on the down arrow to open up the list and scroll down to find wall clock time. This is not a tag you created. This is a class of data object from the controller. It's already there. Then we're going to go to attribute name because we don't want the whole wall clock time. We only want the date time. So it knows that we want wall clock time. Now we go down to date time. Now we're going to give it a destination and the destination is going to be type in control time right there. Hit enter. And we have to put in the first element. So we can't just point date time, which is sub seven double integers, to control time. We have to point date time to control time, the first element. So see, now we have a happy rung. This instruction, GSV, get system variable, will go to the class wall clock time attribute name date time and that's seven double integers and we'll put it in the destination now the destination begins with control time element zero and it's a seven element array now go ahead and save this you can use the floppy disk symbol or you could have went over to file save now we want to download this who active Processor's already right there. You can set the project path, by the way. If you set the project path for this project, then it will always go to that processor. But we'll say download. We won't set the project path. Downloading. Back to the remote run mode. Now, this is interesting. Look at the the first element is 1998. So control time, element 0 out of 0 through 6 is the year, 1998. That shouldn't surprise you. So we'll go to controller tags, go to control time, and go to monitor tags. Expand control time again. So 1998, January 16th, 6.34 in seconds and microseconds. Now you could have created a user-defined data type called control time and then had its members be year, month, day, hour, minutes, seconds, microseconds. I'm going to leave that for you to do at some other time just for entertainment. Because you only do this once in some projects, creating the user-defined data type, and then when you need it, going and finding it and importing it or recreating it, I just do it this way. Now, there are several different ways that you can use this information. You can just remember which data is in which element, starting with zero for year, and working your way down to five for seconds and six for microseconds, or... 
you can create individual tags with logical names like we did and then add logic to move the data into the new tags as such below. Now, remember, there's an easier way to do this, and that is just create that user-defined data type. We're going to go add some logic now. So we're going to add another rung at the end of the program. And we're going to put seven move instructions in there. Because there's nothing in there, I can type MOV enter, and I've got to move. And if I, since I need seven of them, I can right-click, copy, and then go Control B, V, V, four, five, six, seven. Control V, Control V, etc. You can do all the shortcuts you want now. Actually, it just dawned on me I made this more difficult. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to delete all but one. You'll see why. We'll go to this one and we'll say control times zero which is right there so I could I could type in control times zero I could double click here and go down and find control time and select that element or since I see it right there I can grab it and drag it down there okay now 1998 that's the year right so if I type in a Y E there's year hit enter now, right-click, right-click, copy instruction, Control-V. So I simply go here, change the 0 to a 1, and go here, year, month, M-O, enter. So we're going to do this a couple more times. I'm going to pause the video, finish the other five, and then come back. Okay, that was pretty fast, wasn't it? You notice how I did that so fast you didn't see it? So here we have seven move instructions. Remember, these are word copies. It's not really a move, but they call it an MOV. And we've moved all seven elements of the seven element double integer array that we moved our date and time into that you can see right above there. Attribute name, date, time, destination. Now we're moving those into tags called year, month, day, hour, minutes, seconds, and microseconds. Now it's unlikely that you're going to use seconds or microseconds. You may not even use minutes because you can use the trailing edge of the last hour of the shift when it goes from say 2 to 3, you know 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. The trailing edge of 2 or the leading edge of 3 is the first instant of the second shift. In all reality, you probably wouldn't need minutes, seconds, or microseconds, but we brought it all in just for fun. Okay, now we're going to do it a little bit easier. We're actually going to create a user-defined data type. It's safer to go offline, but I like to live dangerous, so I'm going to go to user-defined data types. You see we don't have any. There's no plus sign right here. Right-click, right-click, new data type. And in the lab, we call it time date. And then we added seven double integers as members. I won't make you watch all this. I'll put one in. The first one is year. And data type is DI, enter. Okay, I'll pause now and create the rest of them. Okay, and there's our user defined data type called time date and it has seven members year month day hour minute seconds microseconds now it's up to you whether you like year month days as in plural days hours minutes seconds microsecond or year month day hour minute second microsecond really doesn't matter so we're going to apply it say okay and now we have another data type and in the uh, lab we would then add a copy instruction go to the bottom double click there that gives us a new empty rung and double click again then type in C O P enter now we can take the control time 
which starts with zero. And since we have one showing right here, and then we create a new tag using that data type, and we can call it control time. Uh, since we've already used control time, we'll use, we'll create a new tag called a calendar. And of course we have to define that new calendar. And when it comes to data type, you can type in, we called our user defined data type time date, I think. Yep, right there. Enter. And a length of one, because calendar is seven double integers. It's one user defined data type, not seven of them. Okay, notice that as soon as we type that in, we got the I's instead of the E's. So we will finalize that. Now if we go to calendar, right click, monitor, and expand it. There's your 1998 January 16th, 646, 30 some seconds and microsecond. We've used the, the wall clock time in two different ways. It's your choice if you actually use something like this in your logic or not, whether you do it one way or the other. Uh, actually, I prefer the UDT because it's a little cleaner. One last thing to point out here is this is not 1998. And it's not January 16th. Now, it could be January 16th, the day that you're watching this, but it's never going to be 1998. So we go to controller, we go to date time, and we, my time zone is Eastern time. So I would have to scroll down through here, whoops, up. Central time, Eastern time change date and time. Um, this today happens to be August. Really doesn't even matter what the day is. I believe it's the second, third, 2013. And the time is 2.05, so 2, 6 p.m. Okay, so I, I just went and set the date and time in the controller to August 3rd, 2013 at 2.06 p.m. The, the seconds and the microseconds, uh, even the minutes doesn't have to be that accurate. Now, there is another way to do this. You can um, synchronize this time with something. We're not going to do that. And you could have a just for daylight savings time. And we'll just click that just for grins because where I'm located today while I'm doing this recording does use daylight savings time. Okay, so we'll save that. And again, you can't see it off the bottom of the screen, but I clicked on OK. Now, look at the calendar year, the month, the day, and so on. Now, remember, we've got calendar. We've also got in um, our controller tags. Go to monitor. And now you see it's changed there too. So uh, both rungs of logic are executing. This one, th this one, they're all executing. A more thorough examination of the controller data object from whence we retrieve this t information will be addressed at a later time in the more advanced manuals. Thank you for watching the little short lab on get system variable. As I said, this was in a way part two of the conveyor code. Uh, the next section will be on production shift counts or on production data. Again, thank you for watching.